Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode we begin by once again trying to recover the Casse rocket uh, core stage. We want to at least claim that it is reusable. This time I'll try and recover it out at sea. Well, not really recover it. What we're gonna do is splash it down softly, pretending there's a barge, and thereby demonstrate that it is reasonable uh, for stage recovery to recover it at the appropriate time if we leave a certain amount of fuel in. So that's the basic idea. It's not perfect, but it'll do for now. Uh, we are not trying to recover the upper stage here. That still gets dumped. Uh, this rocket is about the size of a Falcon Heavy, uh, but it's got a much heavier load that is trying to get to lower orbit. We're testing it with a methane oxygen tank this time. Um, that's about 85 tons nearly. Uh, well, actually uh, close to 90 tons with its own uh, Hydrolox fuel there. That's possible because, of course, this is a Hydrolox launcher with uh, healthy thrust weight ratio and all that business. So it's not quite the same configuration as Falcon Heavy, which also loses some efficiency by, you know, having shared cores and throttling down the center core and all that business. Anyway, throttling up, SCS is on. And ignition. And launch. Well, I said a healthy thrust weight ratio. It's pretty unhealthy when it doesn't have its side boosters on, unfortunately. But still able to lift off the ground, at least. Have I overburdened it? We will see. On the bright side, um, it won't be going too fast by the time we separate off the first stage. So obviously this is not actually going to get to orbit. We'll make sure that it's capable of getting to orbit and everything, but... What we'll do is we'll make sure it has a good margin on the upper stage. The upper stage is 5,571 meters per second. And orbital velocity is 7,800, but we'll want a margin of about say 300 meters per second on that because it'll still probably have to tilt up a bit. Uh, so let's estimate 8,100 minus that, let's say 5,500. So what we want to do is be going uh, 8,100 minus 5,500, 2,600? 2,600 meters per second surface velocity. Not surface, uh, orbital velocity we find. That'll give us a 300 meter per second margin. The payload is a little bit awkward there, but it saved me a fairing, so... It's not leaving a whole lot for us to work with here. Alright, so that's 2600 separation. And I'll just ignite that. I think I would be able to bring that to orbit, but let's see about this bit. So, we are not retro-burning, we're pretending there is some sort of barge out here. So... 1,123 meters per second. You will have to use that wisely. I suppose the real problem is, are we going to have communication? Um, we seem to have a line to that satellite up there, so that's pretty good. That won't uh, face a horizon problem. I feel like maybe we should just let it go. It's not going to deviate too much from retrograde at this point. Gonna shut off one pair of engines and the center engine. Uh, I'm not sure whether we're coming in too fast or not. We might be. Oh, let's hold retrograde. Uh, it seems like it. Let me ignite those two. Oh, too late. Okay, well, yeah. We, we'll need to retro. We probably need to save more than that. That payload was probably... Is this interstage going to explode or not? 
Well, the inner stage works pretty well. Anyway, but uh, uh, it's probably just gone physics wacky. Yeah, it's just gone physics wacky. Anyway, maybe I'll have to hold off on the reusability thing. We'll, we'll give it one try, like, each episode and then just move on, move on from there and uh, get some other things done. Otherwise, we'll keep sort of tossing payloads up that we don't mean to get to orbit. All right, back to Space Center. So before we start sending up more supplies to MTV-1, I decided to check in on our crew at MTV-2 around Mars. And one thing I noticed is this maneuver node doesn't seem to be doing what I expected that it would do anymore. Um, this is definitely not the orbit we want to get into. So I think I'll have to fix that. I'll do that off camera, of course. Otherwise, we're expecting that we're 320 days until they start making their way back and then they'll arrive in about six months or so. So 500 days. So we're halfway through the full mission. And right now, Sigbur's got 29% stress. Uh, Jamie's got 29%. Uh, they've all got 29%. Uh, so we're expecting 58%, which is pretty high. The radiation seems fine. Uh, we've known that. I'm almost tempted to leave one here, but they're not going to... I mean, we've got a station, right? We've got uh, modules that they could stay in. Uh, let's quickly take a look at that. Mars Station 1, which I intended to have rendezvous with this MTV-2 here, but uh, we have not done that. It'll be a tight sort of thing as far as Delta V is concerned, so I decided that it might be too tricky. So here we have, well, it'll say perpetual on the food, water, and oxygen, but um, we have, well, that's probably not enough food, water, and oxygen for any Kerbal to last very long, I don't think. So not an option yet, but eventually we'll want a permanent resident on board a space station here. Uh, probably in the next batch of Mars missions, we'll send more to this so that that might be possible but yeah for now no permanent resident it looks like okay so back with mtv2 i had mechjeb replot it says 333 days now of course we're gonna have to start uh working on this way ahead of time because of the ion engines so we'll be getting over here three months ahead of time to start those burns uh, we have enough food water and oxygen right now and if we take a look at our theoretical arrival at Earth. I mean, I'm not too sure it's telling me honest things. It's 600 days. So, I mean, pushing it, they're gonna be really antsy by then. I wonder if I if I plot it, uh, we could get something back that's a little bit faster, but for now I'll leave this and um, I'll save that for when we actually begin to do the burns. But Things are fine here. I do have to pay attention to them more regularly, otherwise the water is not going to be recycled. So we have to keep an eye on that. But I think we're uh, good to continue with um, MTV-1 operations and refueling that and getting it ready to go because it's going to have to start its trip here uh, just a short while after this begins the trip back home. It won't actually arrive back home by the time MTV-1 leaves. Okay, so we're gonna need to get some xenon gas up there and we need to get some methane and oxygen up there. First, we're gonna focus on the xenon gas, so that's what we're bringing up here. So throttle up, SAS is on. Um, I guess I can use the launch script, it's fine. I'm sure it's perfectly trustworthy, right? Right, so um, let me just check. Oh, well, it might get us into a bad inclination. It should be fine. Okay, let's try this. Okay, oh, I left a little bit of rotation. It's fine, it's fine. That's not gonna kill anything. Okay, uh, booster sep is about to happen. Everything else seems nominal. Relative inclination is basically where we were at at launch. And separation. No problems there. Probably would be easier to recover those boosters than... Uh, uh, we'd have to reserve some fuel, but it'd probably be easier to do that than 
to retrieve this core. Oh, uh, do we have the we have the fairings on the same stage? Oops. Okay, ignition is good. So that's rendezvous f rendezvous fuel and then the xenon gas, of course. We can get the solar panels out and of course the comms. Okay, we have shut down. Program is concluded. Our route of inclination is where we had it at the start. I could have probably corrected some of that, but uh, well, given the location of the nodes, maybe not so much. Okay, so it's there. We're probably gonna have to do the burn over here somewhere. I'm not gonna belabor this. We'll try and keep the video of all these rendezvous short. We'll get the job done with a minimal amount of fuss, hopefully. Hopefully. Okay, we've got a theoretically good approach there. We'll do this burn as planned. With any luck, we'll deliver some methane and oxygen as well. We'll see. I'm not going to try and dispose of the stage. It's better to just use the methane and oxygen to refuel the transfer vehicle. Conveniently, oops, I was about to say we've got easy job of timing this, but then I passed the node. I mean, I didn't pass the node, but past the point where I should have started this burn, because uh, half of the burn is going to be done with this stage, relatively speaking, uh, close enough. All right, well, we might as well get on with it. All right, next stage. Uh, oh, right, we were controlling from that part. Okay, we need to deploy that extension, switch engine mode. And the node is all messed up, and that's sad. Well, we'll just do it visually then. Okay. And we'll have to call that close enough and then figure it out at the mid-course adjustments since... Yeah, should have done the node while controlling from this thing instead of the stage. But uh, we've got plenty of Delta V to do our job. So on we go. Okay, I handled the mid-course adjustment off camera. That was 116 meters per second, selling the fuel down for the main rendezvous burn. Um, well, we can throw all down if necessary. Ignition. 1,430 meters per second, typical rendezvous burn up here. I'm trying to push the retrograde vector towards the retro target vector so that we get a closer, closest approach distance here. And I'll take that for now. That'll get us close to render range, and then we'll do the rest of the retro burn, or it's actually a prograde burn, technically. Depends how you look at it what it is relative to. Okay. Looking good, but that's not where we want to dock. Eh, we'll have to get closer before we get a good docking position. We need to get within 200 meters to target the docking port. Technically, I suppose this should pick a docking port in the back here closer to where the fuel is, after all. We don't need to dock up front. Ah, uh, I'll just go over here and tell it to control from there. Okay. Yes, this docking port. This, this docking port. Okay, we are pretty much lined up. Well, at least good enough. And this should be quick, hopefully. Never know what craziness might ensue. It's always best to hedge your bets. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's get the Xenon in. 
We'll need to deliver quite a bit more of that. I just need enough to get the refueler to back off. All right, we'll we'll leave it at that. Okay. So that's good enough. And let's just examine the possibility of pushing it to the moon. I doubt that's going to work. But no, no, just just go off. But let's see. Yeah, no. No, I can't get to the moon. But it can get into a weird other orbit, so let's just go prograde. Let's get it into a higher orbit right now. Or you know what, a lower orbit because the higher orbit seems to be pointing at Mars Transfer Vehicle 1, so lower orbit it is. Okay, off we go. I'm sick of it wiggling around. Alright, let's have another one of those. Okay, so here we go again. Run Casse, Casse. There we go. Same payload, same xenon gas and methane oxygen mix. I don't like doing the same launch back to back, but it is what we have to do right now. Oh, and I forgot to change the roll there. Well, same in every respect. But, uh, yeah, I mean, when you think about it, though, it's still better than trying to refuel Starship. Starship would take, what, five launches, at least, of a uh, launch vehicle that's twice the mass of this. So it'd be ten of these rockets to refuel a Starship. Yeah, and that's in low Earth orbit, of course, but still, we're talking about mass to low Earth orbit. It's still a lot more than we're sending up to Mars Transfer Vehicle 1. Mars Transit Vehicle 1 seems to make it quite nice for us, but of course that's because A, it's carrying less payload to Mars, B, the xenon gas, and uh, C, it's also not doing the whole landing on Mars thing. Uh, that would be awkward <laughs> if uh, we tried to land all of Mars Transit Vehicle 1 on Mars. I'm sure some people would like to see that, but uh, yep. Okay, getting ready for booster separation here. And there they go. And throttle up. Hmm, the NASA logo is upside down on both sides. We should have it rolled the other way around. Anyway. Minor issue. Okay, the second stage is good. And fairing separation. Now I could have tried to refuel by getting stuff to Nerva, docking to it and doing that. And maybe for the last refueler, we'll need one more after this. We'll uh, give that a go. We'll also need to have a HAB moved up there. Well, not the Nerva, the candle stage maybe. Because the Nerva, well the candle stage is a little bit inconvenient. We'll see. But... Um, yeah, the, the Nerva is still holding on to the lander. Maybe we'll move the lander to the ner uh, to the candle stage and use the Nerva to put the new hab. We need an extra hab for Mars Trans Vehicle 1. We need, of course, food, water, and oxygen still. And we'll probably need a little bit more of the xenon gas and methane. Well, probably more of the xenon gas, not so much the methane and oxygen. So maybe we can attach those to the Nerva and bring that up. But then... If the Nerva has to dock, that's going to be complicated. And we'd bet prefer it if the Nerva doesn't have to do any docking, because it's still got the thruster problem. The thrusters aren't well placed. Okay, we are in orbit. About the same delta V we had last time. No big surprise. Let me plot for the rendezvous. Okay, need to activate the payloads RCS again. All right. Everything else is pretty much as before. Except I tried to control from here this time. 
from the docking port, but I think we'll still lose the, the maneuver node. I don't think KOS has quite gotten... Has, hasn't moved on from this stage, and that probably affects things somehow. Okay, settling the fuel down. And ignition. Right off the coast of Texas, over the Gulf of Mexico here. Okay, next stage. Oh, those thrusters are still firing. But okay, nope, we've still got the node, good times. We actually want this fuel unlocked. Did I forget that with the other thing? Maybe. Okay, deploy extension, switch engine mode. Might have forgotten to unlock that little fuel there. Maybe we should keep that locked, actually. We'll use it for deorbiting de if possible. And shut down. I'll handle the mid-course adjustment off camera and I'll see you at Mars Transfer Vehicle 1. As it so happened, I accidentally turned to the previous refueler while trying to retarget Mars Transfer Vehicle 1. And yes, we did have that fuel still locked and it does have 1,460 meters per second, so we can bring it down, which I will now do. That will be enough to deorbit it. I guess that's why it was locked in the first place. Yep, very much deorbited. All right, uh, back to what I was doing otherwise. Okay. Here we go for the ketchup burn. Ketchup, ketchup, ketchup burn. And let's get the target information. All right, enough wiggling. Ignition. A little bit more to do this time than usual. Sort of askew. Well, the appropriate place is still targeted. Because it's still where Mars Trans Vehicle 1 is controlling from. Very convenient. Oh, 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 oh. Um, are we like controlling from the wrong thing or something? Uh, this is not working out quite the way it ought to. Yeah, um, so obviously we need our thrusters to um, push us this away, but. When I try and correct based on nav ball, it's the wrong way around. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. Uh, I'll just do play opposites with the nav ball then. Fine. Hmm. There's something weird going on here. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's very much like we're not controlling from the right part, but I asked it to control control from here. It's definitely not. Um, this was supposed to be just like the previous time game. Um, hmm. I don't even know where it's trying to fire the thrusters like that. Let me go away from this and come back and see if that helps. Let me go to the tracking station. Okay, well this is more promising. At least it shows a target vector in front of me. That's good. I don't know what happened before. Okay, well this time it worked. All right. Transferring all the fuels. Okay, and then separating... Well, let's unlock this tank down here. The reserve tank. And then separate it off. Not that place. Oh, it's trying to turn. Don't do that. Just go away. Go away. 
Okay, and to ensure a safety orbit, we should do it at our apoapsis, not here. This is not the best location. Right around here will be fine. Orbit retrograde. We still have Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 targeted on the off chance that we aim to hit it somehow. Okay, ignition. We don't really need the roll part. Okay, that's a good deorbit. No problems. Of course, we do have a reusable refueler that we could be employing, but that wouldn't deliver quite as much as this does. But we should consider it in the future. Anyway, this one is done for. Okay, so this time I am needlessly complicating things. We are going to rendezvous with Nerva, bring up some liquid hydrogen for it. And that tank is right at the top in the fairing here. I'm sort of, you could, there, it's glowing now. And of course it looks huge, but it's very light. Well, it's 50 tons, so it's not very light, but it's lighter than it might look. Uh, so, and then we also have the xenon gas and a smaller methane oxygen tank because we don't need as much. Um, you'll see, basically the launcher is going to get all that up to low Earth orbit to rendezvous with the nervous stage. And the nervous stage is going to do the, transfer, the main transfer, which is 2,400 meters per second. And then the methane oxygen stage on this will still do the circularization, which is 1,400. All right. I'll just manually control it this time. Ignition. And we'll see whether there's any benefit to this whole way of doing it at all. It's gonna take some Delta V to rendezvous with the Nerva. Because Nerva isn't exactly in low low Earth orbit. It's got a 2800 kilometer apoapsis. So not the most convenient thing. Okay, booster set. All good. First stage set. And ignition of the second stage. And we're in space, so fairing set. Okay, we're about to make orbit. And shut down 217 by 203. Uh, we might be able to make use of this for um, at least matching the periapses here. So I'll retain it. Well, um, maybe not. We'll do a proper test. Uh, let's see if we can deorbit this thing. I Well, its RCS ports aren't really good at turning, though. Well, we'll conceptually leave enough fuel for it to deorbit, and we'll work on that later. All right, it is off. And we need to unlock some fuel here. And we will figure out this whole rendezvous situation. Nope, oh, there we go. Uh, rendezvous after one orbit. Okay, we are approaching the nuclear stage here. We're going to deliver the fuel there. Oh, I've made a horrible mistake, haven't I? Um, well, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, I forget whether the docking port up there is of this type or not. Gosh darn it. Oh no, it's of the circular type. Ah. Uh, well, we can deliver the fuel, but we can't use it. I only have two docking ports to manage, but somehow I can't manage them properly. Well, this is an interesting fit right here. Okay, we have connection and docking. All right, let's transfer this fuel. Uh, that's most of that. Oh, in there, in in. 
Yeah, that's most of this tank. There's still the upper tank on here though. It's about 900,000 liters total. We're giving it about two thirds. Okay. Well, first of all, let's just take this tank off, but nothing we can do since we don't have a docking port that's going to be compatible with it. We'll see whether this little stage, which has less fuel than it usually does, has enough to get us up to Mars Trans Vehicle 1 or not. We're already in a little bit of a higher orbit, but that may or may not help us. Oh, this docking port can't even let go of that. Oh, I forgot about that. Normal docking ports can let go of a payload, but these, for some reason, cannot. Right. I should have put another docking port on it. Now they're joined at the, well, joined at the head, if you will. Okay, things have gone wrong. Mm. Let's redock and transfer what methane and oxygen we can into the lander here. Because this lander needs methane and oxygen after all. So if we could top it off, that'll at least be something and not a complete lit waste, but otherwise this is not not in a helpful situation. This has 6,219 right now. Once we top off the lander, it'll have less, but it should have a fair amount of Delta V. Enough to push that lander over to Mar uh, on a Mars trajectory and then bring itself back into Earth orbit is the goal. So it might be set. It might be all right to do what it needs to do. Oh, 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 oh. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Oh, no, uh, it's wandering. Uh, okay, we got docking again. All right. Well, we have more than enough fuel to fuel this up, really. So we'll let it have the fuel. If there's a way to transfer xenon gas to it, I would. I still have no idea why my little diamond docking ports have that problem where they can't release something docked onto them like that, like the other docking ports do. But that is a fact. We should also top off those supplies in here. Okay, well... That's all we can do. It's a bit of a disappointment, but we'll have to just deorbit this. So now that that's more or less fully fueled up, we've got 5,354, it says. So that would be good. Um, that would be enough to boost this little lander and its transfer helper over to Mars. I really ought to come up with my own like starship like upper section to the Kasei rocket. That's probably the only hope for recovery of the second stage anyway. And that would be interesting. All right, ignition. Okay. So it's on a disposal course. I guess just for the heck of it, we'll watch it explode. Verify the disposal. Well, I was trying to orient butt in first, but it's not going to make much of a difference. Well, engine has a lot of heat tolerance. I'll give it that. Xenon tank doesn't. Uh, everything's exploded. It's fine. All right. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.